In this video, our goal is to understand how addition cure silicones can have their cure inhibited by certain materials that may be found in labs and production areas. Addition cured silicones are offered across many Dow product lines, including foams, adhesives, conformal coatings, gels, and encapsulates. Addition cure silicones contain a cure catalyst that is based on a platinum compound. They are sometimes called platinum cure for this reason. This PT-based catalyst can be inhibited if it contacts some very specific chemicals. Common signs of inhibition are, first, as incomplete cure that shows up as wet, sticky, tacky, gooey, or liquid. Second, as bubbles from outgassing during cure. Third, as slower than expected cure, signaling that while some of the catalysts may be impacted, there is enough active for the material to cure and may be overcome with longer, hotter cure times. Fourth, as lack of adhesion when the material looks otherwise fully cured. Occasionally, customers find that their addition cure silicone material did not cure completely. This is usually noticed after the product has gone through its normal cure process, but afterwards, the silicone remains sticky, is too soft, or has areas that remain wet and in a liquid state. To determine where the problem came from, it is often useful to try to determine exactly where the issue is observed on the part and within the silicone and if cure inhibition is the cause. The inhibitors are often materials containing sulfur or amine species, though there are a few others. Unfortunately, common materials that can cause issues can be found in some organic adhesives. For example, in some tapes, in some rubbers that are amine or sulfur catalyzed, which may be common around the lab in materials such as latex, butyl rubber, or neoprene rubber gloves, and in some additives or plasticizers that are used in certain materials, which may be found in dispense equipment O-rings, tubing, or oils. We recommend that customers check the cure compatibility of anything that may come into contact with the addition cure silicone to avoid cure problems. This is easily done, as we will show. To test for cure inhibition, go around the lab or production area and find potential or suspected sources of contamination or material incompatibility. A good place to start is to find materials suspected or known to cause inhibition that are in the work area. Some common examples are any gloves on the production floor or research labs. It is common to see nitrile, latex, or a wide variety of gloves on a production floor. Tapes are also common material in assembly processes that can cause incompatibility and should be tested. Also consider the dispense equipment that's being used. This is often overlooked, but can subject the material to residual oils or lubrication left in the hoses or nozzles. Remember to consider the materials of construction for dispense lines and O-rings as these can be made of sulfur catalyzed rubbers. Also, test the end materials that the silicone is going to be cured on. For example, if you are curing on a wire, it may contain plasticizers in the coating that could be problematic. Once all the potential sources of contamination are found, prep your sample for testing by using scissors and cut off a small portion. Then place the small sample of material into a small metal dish, as it does not have to use much material. Place the small sample so that it's touching the bottom of the tent, but that there is a portion that is still overhanging and exposed. For liquid samples, such as oils or lubrication, pipette or pour a small drop into the bottom of the tent for testing. Repeat this procedure for all the other potential sources of contamination. Next, use an addition cure silicone material, a dispense gun, and the proper mixer, and dispense the material on top of the samples. For this study, we used Silgard 170 Fast Cure. However, it's best practice to use the material you are using on site, as platinum catalyst amount and cure inhibition sensitivity can vary by product. Fill up the tin so that it covers the portion of the sample that is touching the tin, but leave some of the sample uncovered to compare. For liquid samples, cover the entire bottom of the tin. Repeat this procedure for all the samples that you want to check for cure compatibility and wait the expected cure time. 
or ideally slightly longer, to come back and check the material. This is because sometimes the contaminant slows the cure. However, it doesn't succeed in stopping it completely. Also confirm that the cure time accounts for any oven heat up and that the material actually sees the needed temperature for the correct amount of time. Once the target cure time is up, come back with a gloved finger and press on each sample to make sure it's cured and tack free. Check your glove after each sample to see if any residue comes off the sample. If you pick up residue, that's a good early indication that cure inhibition is occurring. Wipe off or change gloves and then come back and continue to check each sample. To further investigate, each sample can be inspected for other evidence of cure inhibition. If the material is fully cured everywhere as expected, it's a good indication that no cure poisoning is happening. Also, explore by pulling on the sample to see if there is good adhesion, if the product should have that attribute. Compare the surrounding area, or a separate control tin, to the area where the silicone is in close contact to the suspected material to see if they have similar properties. Look for wet, softer, or tackier than expected surfaces for evidence of possible cure inhibition. Look for evidence of incomplete or slower than expected cure as other possible evidence of cure inhibition. If it is still difficult to conclude if the product is experiencing inhibition, the sample can be cut in half near the interface and explored further to see if there are incomplete or tacky surfaces at the interface or if there are other areas of incomplete cure throughout the product. You can guard against contamination and inhibition by 1. Understanding which compounds have the potential to inhibit platinum. 2. Practicing good cleaning and hygiene, preventing the catalyst from contacting these compounds during processing. 3. Adding a barrier between the inhibiting material and the platinum cure silicone such as a primer with extra catalyst or a small amount of another chemistry to act as a buffer, especially when the inhibiting surface is an integral part of the assembly.